Hey everyone! So, in today's video, I am going to show y'all how we do blood draws. Um, I am not saying that I'm an expert at it, um, but I have learned enough to where I'm able to do it for our farm. Um, but that is only out of practice, 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 and it still scares me whenever I do it because um, it's just one of those things that I don't feel comfortable doing on my goats. But I will show you how it's done um, and I'll show you the supplies that you need. Okay guys, so what you'll need for your blood draws is you'll need paper towels, um, you'll need rubbing alcohol, or what I like to use are the little um, gauze, the alcohol swabs. You'll need your needles, which we use the um, 20 gauge, sorry for the bump, um, the 20 gauge 1 inch. Uh, you don't want... A smaller needle and you don't want a larger needle whenever pulling blood the 20 gauge is perfect size although you do want the one inch versus like a half inch or a three quarter um, because it's the perfect length for whenever you are drawing but whenever you are drawing blood to um, to have it fit okay so you'll need your syringes um, now I know for our lab, they require anywhere from three to five cc's of blood. That's usually what most labs require. Um, I just I just get the three cc syringes because um, you'll see uh, here in a minute whenever I demonstrate as far as um, pulling the blood, you're, you're having to do everything like kind of one-handed um, and it's just that smaller syringe is a little bit easier for me to um, operate and like I said you'll see here in a minute and you'll understand what I'm talking about you'll need gloves I always anytime that I'm doing stuff with the goats as far as like drawing blood or whatever I have like some baby wipes on hand uh, you'll need uh, a sharpie um, I've got the fine tip uh, and the regular one um, and it's just preference on that but I find sometimes writing on the vials with the uh, regular sharpie tip is a little hard and so I use the fine. You'll also need the blood vials. Now these are vacuum sealed um, blood vials. They usually have the um, like this uh, red top. Mainly uh, I got these from one of the livestock um, online per, uh, suppliers like either Premier One or Valley View or Jeffers. I can't remember exactly which one. Um, but they normally come in like a box of a hundred. Um, so my box, I'm with my herd and even with our annual testing and like our um, preg checks and stuff that we do, I'm still working on my pack of a hundred from two years ago. So, uh, and one thing that you need to look for is whenever you pull it out of the box, um, always look around the tip um, where the rubber meets the glass um, because it could have like, if one vial broke in shipping or if um, if the test tube cracked or whatever, you, you wanna make sure that it is good. Um, you wanna make sure that there's no cracks. You wanna make sure that there's no, there's no glass dust. Um, little shards of glass. You want to make sure that at the seam up here, let me see, like up in here, you want to make sure that um, it's not cracked or chipped because um, if it is, that vacuum seal is going to be broke and you just want to toss the test tube. Now, 
that's another thing to have on the farm is a good sharps container. You want sandwich bags. Um, and the reason why I say sandwich bags is because whenever you send off your, um, your test tube with your blood, um, okay, so whenever you send off your test tube with the blood in it, you are going to have to take a piece of paper towel. You're going to have to fold that up. You're going to wrap the test tube. You're going to put that test tube in your Ziploc bag. You're, you know, and this is where my Sharpies come in into play is to where you take your fine tip, you put the name of the goat on the test tube. And then you take the bigger Sharpie and you put the name of the goat on the Ziploc bag. Um, and then each one is going to go wrap in the, the paper towel, put it in the Ziploc bag, and then you're going to, you know, fold up or wrap up the Ziploc bag to where, you know, it's pretty much like this. Um, all the air is out and then you are going to, uh, then, you know, do the bubble wrap and stuff for the shipping, which we will get into that, um, later <laughs> in this video, um, or even another video, depending on how this one goes. Okay. So one of the other things that you want to have is a notebook, um, like for your records and stuff that way, while you're drawing blood on your goats, you're able to write it down as far as which goat you're doing, all of that, because otherwise you're going to be having to go back um, and try to remember who you drew blood on, for what reason, um, if you had any problems, um, you know, if you were able to stick that goat but not draw blood for whatever reason. Um, and I mean, I keep records on everything to do with our goats. So if there is ever a problem, we can go back and look back and say, okay, well on this day, you know, this is what we did with the goat or, you know, they had a problem or for whatever reason. Um, so I always like to have a notebook on hand whenever I'm dealing with anything to do with the herd. Um, so you'll need your wet wipes, your alcohol swabs, your needles, your syringes, your paper towels, your Ziploc bags, your Sharpies, your gloves, your test tubes, um, notebook, uh, can't remember if I said wipes, uh, and then like if you have a Sharps container, um, but if you don't, any hard plastic um, container like a milk jug or something, you can always have and put in there uh, and then just whenever it's full you can tape it over. Um, that will work as well. Um, and let's see, I think that's it I covered. Oh, also, um, because you're going to be having your goats on the stand while you're doing this, um, I never know, because I have so many goats now, um, I never know who I've caught up with as far as hoof trimming. So I just always bring my hoof pick and hoof trimmers with me, uh, whenever I'm doing any, uh, blood pools or anything like that on the goats just in case like someone needs their hooves trimmed while they're on the stand might as well get it done um and all of that so um when pulling blood i have found that it is much easier to have a stand whether that is a milk stand or a show stand um something that um just is able to hold the goat um and it is always easier whenever you have a second set of hands um to where you know the the goat's neck muscles where you're going to be pulling the blood um sometimes it's easier if they pop whenever you turn their head this way or this way and um you'll see momentarily whenever i demonstrate uh to where you'll understand why it's easier to have a second set of hands it's always really good to have a set of clippers on hand to shave that fur to get to the vein. Um, now I will demonstrate again whenever I do this with the goats um, to where you'll understand why it makes it your job so much easier on trying to pull blood because whenever they got all their fur on them it makes it extremely hard to see what you're doing. So um, 
yeah and we'll get started here in just a minute and i'll show y'all what we do what do y'all think <laughs> now do you think she's bred <laughs> she is huge on that side she's always been really wide here's her rumen which is really tight because she just ate um <laughs> but she's a big girl hey guys so the lighting in here isn't too well it's been cloudy all day outside. We are about to have our next uh, snow system come in, um, in within the next 48 hours to where we should have anywhere from two to six inches of snow on the ground, which all that means is wet weather, which I don't like. Um, so I'm trying to uh, get done with this and then with coronavirus going on. Um, so today is the 14th and normally my video that I would post for y'all on Friday, um, it's just not going to happen. Um, I'm going to try to edit this weekend and uh, hopefully, I know that Monday is a holiday, um, but hopefully I can get back on track on Wednesday. Um, and I know that this video that I'm making, y'all won't get until um, next Friday. So I apologize um, for the uh, no videos on uh, today and on Monday. Um, so, the thing is to where, um, I, uh, with coronavirus going on, um, my kids are out of school for virtual learning, and so I am not only having to, um, play, uh, mom and goat keeper and, you know, boss in charge and everything else, um, my kids are home and they're driving me crazy already. So, um... I've just been taking my time and especially with, with all this snow and precipitation that's coming in um, it's just slowing me down so um, I apologize for that but we should be back on track next week um, so blood draws I'm going to show y'all um, in regular time as far as with Fidella and then I'll speed up my time for the other does because it's probably going to take me um, since I'm having to do it by myself it's probably going to take me um, a couple of days uh, but it is also, I have these, uh, six, um, possibly eight does that I need to draw blood on for preg checks. Um, but whenever I turn, whenever I send in their blood, I'm going to go ahead and have their, um, biosecurity or their annual biosecurity testing done as well for the, um, Yoni's CL and CAE. Um, we test our herd every year. Um, usually it's in March every year because, um, we're usually, it's usually the end of March because our kidding season is normally over by then. And I don't like to stress out the pregnant moms. Like I said, she is not going to like, none of them are going to like to have their neck shaved very much. But it is what it is. Alright. So I got my glove on. Got my alcohol swab. swab. I've got my syringe with needle over here. I'm going to hold on to it. And do the best I can doing this by myself. And this is where it is much easier whenever you have a set, an extra set of hands to where they can hold the goat's head while you attempt to do this. Alright, so, I'm only going to attempt this one time by myself, because I don't know if I can do this, but we will see. <laughs> 